7 a.m., but Daniel awake at 6 a.m. Helen woke up late, 7.34 a.m., so had to do morning routine quickly. Ended up leaving at 8.10 a.m. on our way to National Archaeological Museum, or NAM for short. 20-minute walk to the museum. Saw people opening stores, pigeons, and the weather was nice. Reminded Helen of downtown Toronto, but with nice weather. Also saw bakeries we wanted to try, but decided to do that on the way back. Arrived to NAM at 8.28 a.m. Good speed, Helen and Daniel. We went through a mini security and got our ticket scanned to enter. Helen forgot to mention this, but before heading out, we downloaded the Rick Steves audio guide for the National Archaeological Museum, which we listened to on a shared pair of headphones as we walked around. We started our tour by learning about early ancient Greece with the Cyclades, the Mycenaeans, and the Minoans. The Cycladic civilization inhabited the Cycladic islands around 3rd millennia BC to 1000 BC and had a mixed farming economy. The Mycenaeans were a warrior class civilization from 1600 to 1100 BC, named after city center Mycenae. Clay tablets written in Linear B represent the first evidence of Greek writing. Another Mycenaean artifact is the golden mask of Agamemnon that would be tied over faces of the dead with twine. Minoans were a peace-loving civilization that were contemporary but opposite in nature to the Mycenaeans. The Archaic period began around the 8th century BC and lasted until the 5th century BC when the Persians invaded Greece. In this section of the museum, we saw the Diplon vase as well as many Kuroi and Korai. The Kuros was a statue of a naked young man and represented deceased people at their prime. They are youthful, larger than life, and often have a placid, archaic smile which suggests the inner secret of happiness. A kori is a statue of a woman. Unlike a kuros, these are typically smaller than life and are clothed and represent female modesty and feminine grace. Five hundred to four fifty BC. Time was characterized by Greek wars against the Persians. Here we saw the six foot ten tall bronze statue of a god at war. It was either Poseidon throwing a trident or Zeus hurling a thunderbolt. It was unknown because the weapon was not recovered. The Golden Age lasted from the middle of the 5th century BC to the end of the 5th century BC. Human emotion is usually understated in Golden Age art. We saw lots of statues of Hera, Apollo, and Aphrodite. The Golden Age also saw the return of the erection of grave stelae. These grave stelae were depictions of the dead, usually seated, and were meant as funerary monuments. We also saw a statuette of Athena holding Nike, the goddess of victory, in her hand. This is a mini copy of a mega statue that used to be in the Parthenon and stood over 40 feet tall. However, this original statue is lost to history. We stopped at the museum cafe for a bathroom break and some food. It was really pretty as the cafe was situated outside in a sort of central garden area in the museum. the Hellenistic era. This era followed the conquest of Alexander the Great and is characterized by sculptures with distinct imperfect features such as balding men or women with loose chesticles. Artwork here focused on exuberance rather than the restraint of the golden age. 
The first cynics were in this time period. They were considered the first hippies, meaning they gave up personal belongings and materialism. Also found a statue of a fighting Gaul. Hellenistic statues often involved action and were interesting from all angles. The Roman period began in 146 BC with the Roman victory at the Battle of Corinth. The Romans admired and appropriated Greek culture, importing and making copies of sculptures and learning the language as a sign of sophistication. Portrait art in the Roman era flourished, with statues of Emperor Augustus and Emperor Claudius on display at the museum. Hadrian was another Roman emperor in this time and was a noted Grecophile. He learned the language and built monuments such as Hadrian's Library or Hadrian's Arch and even went as far as having a young Greek boyfriend. The respect that the Romans had for the Greek culture is a major reason for the survival of ancient Greek art today. In the late Roman period, the sculptures tend to have somber expressions and generic features. The Roman period ended with the fall of the Roman Empire, and Greek culture was sequestered to Constantinople in the Eastern Byzantine Empire, and lost to the Western world until the Renaissance in 1500. Antikythera The Antikythera was an ancient protocomputer used to calculate the lunar motion. The gear offset of the Antikythera created variable speed which reflected the actual lunar motion observed on Earth. It could have various inputs such as the date and outputs of lunar motion on that date. Included in this exhibit were many different models of the mechanism, as well as a Greek flag that had been on the surface of the moon. We left the museum at around 1.30 p.m. and walked back to the hotel, following the same route that we took to get there. We stopped at the bakery that we mentioned before and had some sandwiches, an apple pie, spinach pie, and mellow macarona. Helen rated the food 6.5 out of 10, and I rated the food 7.5 out of 10. We then walked back to our hotel to have a nap. We woke up from our nap at 5.15 p.m. and walked around Placa but it was too dark so I could not see the true beauty of the neighborhood. Then we went to Efkaris to eat as it was on the list. I had briam, which was eggplant, tomato, potatoes, onion, etc., tzatziki sauce, and Greek salad. Daniel had lamb and tzatziki. Daniel rated it 7.5 out of 10. Well, I rated it a 6.5 out of 10. I rated it a 6.5 out of 10 because today had more variety than yesterday, but tasted a little worse. We finished off by visiting the Metropolitan Cathedral of Athens. Tomorrow we visit the Acropolis. The Sever style. The Sever style. The Sever style.